Hey Toronto, if you're feeling stuck in the city right now, you are not alone. Pulling your hair out in traffic or sweating it out in a bus stop. Toronto commutes are on average an hour, last year ranking third worst in all of North America. Maybe you're feeling stuck with your pad. Back-to-back 20% average rent increases could do that to you. And with average home prices around a million, many are writing off buying altogether. But mix in some of the best restaurants and nightlife in the world, and maybe that will even the score. Now, with inflation through the roof, the fun things that used to draw so many people to this city now seem painfully out of reach. With all that stuckness, no wonder there's a vibe. The city just isn't working right now. Toronto stands at a crossroads. Renters versus buyers, drivers versus transit riders, suburbanites versus downtowners. A city divided, leading to years of squabbling, so much so things often don't get done. Like what to do with the Scarborough RT being decommissioned this year and still we're debating what to replace it with. And Rail Deck Park, that would-be oasis over the track, seemed to have momentum and then poof, it was gone and now may be replaced by a condo complex. Even the current situation with Ontario Place, the provincial government says it's going to go ahead and do what it wants with its own land, and yet the debate over it continues. So in so many ways, this mayoral by-election is an opportunity to come together. Complaining about Toronto's housing crisis is uniting people, and after decades of underbuilding, Toronto's playing catch-up. There were nearly 250 cranes in use in Toronto this spring. That's more than New York, Boston, LA, Seattle, San Francisco, and Washington, D.C. combined. The sprint to build is being outpaced by Toronto's exceptional population growth. Nearly 180,000 more people live in the city than did just a decade ago, and another 700,000 people are expected by 2051. So the city has a new target to build 285,000 new homes by 2031. And the question is, how? Getting safety under control is another major priority. There have been rare but terrifying moments of random violence this year, including the unprovoked stabbing death on a subway platform of 16-year-old Gabriel Megalis just coming home from the mall with his friends. Some are calling for more police, some are calling for fewer, but while we figure it out, even a perceived loss of safety is enough to tarnish a world-class tourist destination. What's the point of a world-class city if you can't get anywhere within it? Simultaneously annoying pedestrians, cyclists, transit riders, and drivers. Major sticking points in Toronto, money and authority. It's like borrowing your friend's car. Sure, you're the one driving it, but many things about the car aren't actually up to you. The provincial government not only holds the keys, but owns the car. And the city just always seems to be begging other governments for money. It is time that we stop being treated and I stop being treated as a little boy going up to Queen's Park in short pants. True, people are tripping over themselves trying to replace Toronto's first so-called strong mayor. And after a record 70% of Toronto voters snoozed through the last vote, hopefully more of us peel away from summer and cast a ballot this time around to chart a path forward for the city that makes people feel a little less stuck.